the standard is high and so is the excitement at the Tomoana Showgrounds Hastings. We're at Land Rover Horse of the Year. It is the biggest event, I think, in, in uh, New Zealand. So it covers a lot of different disciplines, which are all the horse disciplines that come under equestrian. Muda Love is of a rare breed. He's an accomplished horseman himself and an international judge of dressage. In the past year, he's judged in Sydney, Germany, Japan, Norway and the US. It's quite a responsibility, I feel, but I also think it's quite a good one because you can also be there to really help the riders and also represent New Zealand, I think, on an international stage. You know, when you're in other shows around the world, you get to talk with other international colleagues, you get to see what the standard is like, what their training is like. And when I come home to New Zealand, then I can sort of try and put some of that back into what I'm doing as a judge. He's top ranked internationally, but what makes him most proud is his role in a much more personally rewarding category. Yeah. yeah, well done, Tony. Thank you. Yeah, uh, and you. you. Yes. <laughs> well done. He was so good, wasn't he? He was good to so, see. So yeah. Muda gives his special talents to a very special category for the physically impaired. The old word was disability, but I think that, that word's you know been changed. To, we're all sort of a bit more modern now, and now um, we use the word impairment, and it's for you know people that have had some multiple sclerosis or have had some bad injuries or are sort of a bit disabled in their bodies. Disabled in body but not in mind, they're just as competitive and passionate as any able-bodied rider out there. So I've got FSHD muscular dystrophy, which is facio-scapular humeral muscular dystrophy, which is a weakness of um, the skeletal muscles. Um, so my arms, I can't lift my arms up higher than this. Um, my trunk balance is really bad. My fingers can't move very well. Um, legs are affected as well, and you kind of hit the area. So everything's pretty, pretty weak. Despite all of that, there's no easy ride for Jody. In dressage, there are multiple levels of difficulty. It's a bit like dancing, I think, to be able to lift your body off the ground as you sort of move around the floor. Nicola lives with chronic rheumatoid arthritis. Her specialty is also dressage. I'm able to use things like loops on my reins and my stirrups have got magnets in them and I can ride a neck brace and I can still compete I still enjoy horses. And no one enjoys this world more than Muda. He's intuitive in the way he deals with horses and riders. Yeah, Muda's been a great, great um, ambassador for the sport. And yeah, we're just really lucky to have him here. And we are just so fortunate that he is here to sit in the car and judge us with all that knowledge. And yeah, he's, he's, um, he's been a huge help to Power Dressage in New Zealand. Of course, Muda would never say that. He's far too modest. And maybe that's because of this place. 30 kilometres out of Gisborne is Whangara, on the east coast, Te Tairawhiti. It's from here he draws his mana and his identity. I couldn't tell you how proud I am to be from, from Whangara. I think all of us that are from there just have this real tight bond with um, where we're from, uh, who we are, and, and that strong sense of identity and a, and a really strong whakapapa as well. From childhood, Muda, his brothers and sisters, and tamariki from around the neighbourhood grew up on horseback. It was second nature. Papa John made sure of that. We had uh, ten counted out of, of kids that grew up here and their parents didn't want them so we, my wife, their mother, take that one, take that one, we had, <laughs> we had all of them and brought them through and helped them along on those things, horses mainly. We just had had the best life I think, you know, now when I think about it, um, we knew our 
all of Whangarau, we knew the beaches, we knew all the hills. We had horses, of course, that we could ride everywhere. And Dad was heavily involved in horses. So I guess we just followed in, in his footsteps. It really was the idyllic life, the great outdoors, the animals, an endless summer. We never had saddles. Um, we had, I think, maybe like two bridles between five of us, or probably even less. So we would get up in the morning, we would catch the horses, we would be gone all day. We would go swimming at the beach or uh, at the river, or we would ride over the hills. He always rode differently to the rest of us siblings. Yeah. You know, we, we pretty much rode co coasty stops, <laughs> always, you know, sack of spuds, you know, we sort of rode like that, yeah, let's go. Yeah. But he always rode proper, always. Yeah. Mihi Love is his younger sister and fiercely proud of Muda. We are like 100% proud of Muda and his achievements. Um, he, yeah, he has pretty much manifested this journey um, from where we were kids, really. How proud are you of your son? Oh, buzzing. Buzzing, eh? <laughs> yeah. Well, when, they, when I heard that he is four-star, and that's high in the judging line. four-star rating makes Muda only one star away from being eligible to judge at the Olympic Games. What do you think about your uncle? Cool. Yeah? What's it like seeing him go overseas and do all these crazy, you know, cool things? Crazy? Yeah. He role models to not just our kids, but, you know, all of us and to everyone that he knows or that knows him and that have been brought up here with him at Bangara, um, that um, that you just have to dream big, you have to dream big, and you have to put things in place to reach those goals. Um, because you can come from the, the simplest of backgrounds and still reach the epitome of where he is. Christchurch. This is where Muda bases himself, where he coaches and keeps his horses. So how do you make a special bond with your horse? Yeah, I think this sort of thing is really important. Yeah. Um, doing really cool things with him, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I guess really kind of observing him, treating him with quite a lot of respect and, and you know, re when you really want something to be really good, you yeah. spend all your time, you know, building up a good relationship with it, really. So I'm just going to tie him up by you, Jess. Oh, get your big head over here. So do you just do, do it in strokes? Yeah, just like strokes down. Oh, nice. And, and that also builds up that relationship with the horse. Yeah. As well, because, you know, you're you know, handling him and grooming him and... Looking um, after him. Looking after him. Yeah. That's so nice. Dressage is quite an expensive sport and for Māori it might not be something that we can do within our means. But why do you think Māori should get involved in the sport? Firstly, I think there's a Māori have a lot of natural ability to, um, to work with animals and to work with horses. Um, and also possibly even or probably on a more formal setting, on a competition stage. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to see more Māori get involved. Good and supple him, unlock him and flex him a little bit, squarish corner, round your inside leg. Good, that's it, round your inside leg, unlock the neck a little more. Yep, good. Yeah, good boy, he wants to reach down, doesn't he? All I can say about horses is that you know, if it's in your blood, it's in your blood. You, you just, it's hard to live without them. So you start off and then go, but bigger in the paddock. Okay, something like that. Yeah. Good cool, job. well done. It's funny, because no matter what, what, what sort of income you have, you'll make ends meet if you have a horse and you love that horse. Muda is making quite a name for himself on the local and international scene. 
but in true Muda style, he's modest about what might come next. As a whānau, we, we want him to judge at the Olympics because we all know that that's definitely been one of his long-term goals. But in actual fact, he's made it short-term, really. But that's definitely one thing that we want to see him do. We know that he'll get there. Are you interested in judging the Olympics? I think we all work towards, you know, being the best that we can at what we do. Yeah, look, I would, I would never say never.